Hello, Mr. Henderson. Hi. I'm Willem Vissels from the Volkskrant, which is the guardian of Holland. <laughs> uh, why Ajax? Because it's one of the biggest clubs in the world, uh, the biggest club in Holland. And um, I felt as though it was a great opportunity for me personally to, to come to a huge club, try and help um, this club go forward and be as successful as possible. But you were not satisfied anymore in Saudi Arabia. Then you, have to, you can choose a lot of clubs in all the world, in Germany and Italy and whatever. Um, uh, I heard it has, has something to do with taxes that you didn't go to Britain. But why then uh, not Germany or because Ajax has the worst season in, in history. They're on the fifth place and you are a top player. What is then the reason? Can you a little bit sp more specific? Okay, don't believe what you read in the press, I would say, is a little <laughs> bit of advice. Um, it had nothing to do with anything else other than a football decision. Um, I felt it was a perfect opportunity for me to come to such a huge club um, and showcase, again, what I've tried to do my whole life, and that's dedicate my life to football and try to um, be as successful as possible. Um, I felt, I feel as though the welcome here has been incredible. I'm very overwhelmed to, to be given the opportunity to be at this great football club. Um, and I just want to repay the faith that's been showed in me um, to bring us here over the next two and a half years. I'll give absolutely everything and dedicate my life to this football club to try and get it back on track and, and be successful as possible. Last question. Um, how good are you at the moment? Because you played in Saudi Arabia, I think <laughs> 17 games, I heard, um, in, in, in Heath. Uh, slow, slow game. Um, how good are you at the moment? And when can we'll you play? We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> um, it's, of course, it's up to me to, to show how good I am on the pitch and training every day in the games. And um, I'm ready to play as soon as possible, but obviously, I've got to wait for things for like work permits and stuff first to make sure that's all good. And as soon as, as soon as everything's re good and ready, I'll be ready to go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Um, you think the English press are direct? <laughs> <laughs> um, <It's fine. laughs> so tell us how, how much of this was a football decision and how much of it was a family decision? Because you alluded to that on your Instagram post last night. Um, yeah, it was, it was very much a football decision. Um, of course, I've got to make the decision based for me, that what's best for me and my family as well. Um, but the decision to come here was a football decision. And um, it, like I said before, it's a huge opportunity for me, for me personally. Um, I can't thank Ajax enough for the faith that they've showed in us and the opportunity that they've given me to come at this great football club. And I just want to, I just want to get going. I'm so excited to be here. And um, like I said, I just want to get going, get training, get playing and, and show them what I can do. So give us an idea then of just how challenging it was for you, because six months, you'd obviously put a lot on the line, including your reputation. And then to only give it six months, it must have been quite a big, a big reason for you leaving. Well, I think a lot of people would probably like us to sit here and criticise the Saudi league and everything that went along with that, but that certainly wasn't the case and that's something that I'm not going to do. You know, I've got full respect for the for the league, for, for Eddie Fat, the club, for the people over there who really made us feel welcome. Um, but unfortunately, you know, these things in life sometimes just don't work out um, in football, in life in general. And yeah, I made a decision as soon as I knew it, this opportunity was there. I had to make a decision and the decision was this was the best move for me and my family at this time. Um, and yeah, if anybody was offended or feel as though I've upset them, then that's on me, you know, that's, that was my decision. And I apologise for that. That was never my intention. Um, but I'm, I just want to look forward now and concentrate on being the best player I can be for Ajax. Do you accept then, you've just alluded to it, that you've got a bit of bridge building to do perhaps with the LGBTQ community who still feel that you put money over morals? Listen, I said six months ago um, that if I offended anybody or if people felt as though I let them down, then I apologise for that and I'll, I'll apologise again. But as I said before, my beliefs have never changed, never will. Um, and again, I can only apologise if people do feel let down. But I haven't changed as a person, never have. And I just want to continue to focus on my football um, and give everything I, I can for this great football club. Thank you. Any more questions on this side of the, yeah? yeah.
did you miss the competition uh, to get the best out of yourself in Saudi Arabia? Um, it's st listen, it's still competitive league, you know, it's still com competition. Um, but, you know, there's the circumstances that um, I, I just felt as though this opportunity was a, it was a huge one. Um, and I felt as though this is, was the right ne move for next for my career um, and what I wanted to do. Um, obviously, it was a big decision um, with how long I'd, I'd been out in Saudi, but they fully respected the decision. And um, I was just thankful that it was handled in the right way. Um, and yeah, everybody shook hands and, and we'll move on. Have, have you met uh, uh, your new teammates already today? Briefly, yes. That was nice. Just in the morning, I met a few um, before they went out to training. So yeah, it was nice to, nice to meet them finally. Uh, you, you haven't trained with them yet? Not yet. I've, I have to wait for um, like work permits and everything, visas to make sure that's all good. And then hopefully that can get solved soon. And as soon as that happens, I can, I can get going. Have you seen the latest games of Ajax? And uh, if so, what was your impression of it? I feel as though, yeah, I feel as though there's there's been games where, of course, I've seen that uh, they maybe haven't done so well, especially at the start of the season. Um, but I feel as though, you know, things have changed a little bit and they've bounced back a little bit to get back up the league. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of young, talented players that I can see, especially even I only watched training today for like. 20 minutes or so, um, and I, I could see so much talent and potential with so many young players. And um, I feel as though part of my role and part of my job is to try and help the team with me, my experience um, and try and help guide these players to, to make the next step. And if I can do that, great. But of course, I need to do my job on the pitch and perform to the levels that I know I'm capable of. Um, so yeah, hopefully I can, I can do that as soon as possible. Thank you. Jordan, um, you've spoken about how different the challenge was in Saudi Arabia. Given that it was six months after a very big decision to leave Liverpool, I just wondered if you had any regrets over that decision to go there in the first place. I think, <laughs> Listen, look, look, looking back, you know, at the time, um, obviously it was a big decision. It was a decision that I felt um, was right for me and my family at the, at the time. But, you know, things happen, like I, I said before, things happen, things change quickly in football. And um, I had to make another decision. And this is, this is the one I felt was the right decision for me. And the opportunity was too big to, to turn down for me, playing at this great football club. Um, and yeah, I was just so excited by the opportunity. And um, this is why I wanted to, to come. Say that's a, a yes on regrets, or is it just something that <laughs> happened? I think, listen, in life, you know, you can, if you want to call them regrets or mistakes, you, you, you can call them that. But at the same time, you know, the only mistakes if you don't learn from them. And uh, I learned a, le a lot of things out in Saudi, you know, there was a lot of different experiences. And like I said, I haven't got a bad word to say about anybody over there in the league, in the club, the people that tried to make us feel as comfortable as possible and my family. Um, and I'll have friends over there that I'll speak to forever. Um, so there's still positives to come out of it, you know, and um, yeah, it, in the end, um, it didn't turn out the way we both wanted it to, but we ended it on great terms. And, 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 and like I said, we'll, we'll shake hands and, and we'll move forward. Um, and you spoke to Gareth Southgate before going out to Saudi Arabia and you're standing with England and you've been in the, the more recent squads. I just wondered with the Euros coming up this summer, if you've spoken to him about coming here. Um, I'm in contact with with Gareth regularly, as I have been for, for many years um, in my career. So yeah, that 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 hasn't changed. Um, like he is with all the players, you know, you know how close he is to the to, to the lads. So yeah, he he understands the situation. Um, and like I said, it was just yeah a decision that I needed to make for me and my family to come and play at this amazing football club and and um, and being in this amazing city. And I can't wait to get going. Thank you. Jordan, this is Dutch Television. Hello. Hi. Congratulations. Hi. Thank Welcome. you. Welcome. Thanks. Um, they always talk about the Ajax culture. <laughs> Does the man next to you already explain what is the Ajax culture? He doesn't need to explain too much. Um, we have spoke a little bit, um, and I'm sure we'll speak a lot more over the next coming days or weeks. Um, but, you know, I think Ajax... And the, and the culture speaks for itself. You know, it's such a huge club. The, some of the biggest players in the world to play at this club, you know. 
uh, when I was a kid, you look back and you have players like Seedorf, um, Edgar Davids, um, Rijkaard, Van Basten, you know, players like that who are huge, huge players and figures in football. Um, and more recent, you know, like Zlatan and, and Luis Suarez, who I'm, I'm good friends with, you know, so it's, you know, Ajax speaks for itself. I think one of the big things I can sort of see looking from, from afar at the club is they've always had talented players coming through the youth system, um, making it into the first team and then staying or either moving on and, and doing really well in the careers. Um, and that, that's one thing they've always produced. And again, I alluded to it. Um, a couple of minutes ago when I said I watched training for 20 minutes and straight away I could see how much talent was in the squad and a lot of young faces, a lot of young players and um, hopefully now I can come in and I can try and help on that on that front. Yeah, we, we spoke yesterday to Pepijn Leinders, you get the greetings. <laughs> Thank you. You called him, no? Yes. What did he say to you about Ajax? He, he said very positive things. He said it was a beautiful club, amazing club. Um, he spoke very highly of, of the coach. Um, what did he say about the coach? <laughs> yeah, what did he say? <laughs> he said he's one of the best managers in Holland, um, which was a really big compliment. And also, mm. he was a great, great guy, really humble guy, and a great guy to work with. Um, and also, it was a beautiful club, beautiful city. And um, he thought it was a perfect fit for me as a, as a player and a person. And he felt as though it was a, a good option for me, especially with he knows us quite well. Um, and how passionate, how, how big the fans are over, over here. And that's really important for me. Thank you. Thank you. Jordan, welcome to Amsterdam. Thank you. Um, one key word that we hear when people internally here at Ajax and also externally talk about this transfer is leadership. But leadership is quite a yeah, broad concept. What, what is being a leader in a football team to you? How do you demonstrate leadership? I think leadership comes, I've said this before, and all, all different forms really. You have different leaders in all sorts of teams and, and, and thankfully I've been lucky enough to work with some great people um, in my time, in my career um, and the clubs that I've been at and I've been very fortunate to work with great teammates, great, great management, great staff around us to help lead a, lead a team. Um, it's important that you can't just have one or two leaders in a team, you need more than that, you need four or five to help lead, lead, a, lead a whole team and lead a group. Um, but for me, I just want to come here and try to be myself, you know. Um, I just want to do what I've always done my whole career, dedicate me, my life to this club, um, try and help my teammates around us, try to make them better. Um, and if I do that, then yeah, hopefully we can keep pushing forward, keep being, winning games and hopefully become uh, successful in the near future. You've talked to Pepijn Leinders. Are there any other people you've consulted before deciding to come here? Yes, privately. <laughs> any, any you can share with us? Perhaps? No. Pep's, I'll share Pep. You can have Pep. He's the only one. But yeah, I've spoken to a few different people um, that, that have either been at the club or know a lot about the, the club and, uh, and, the, and the country and the city. So yeah, to be honest, what I would say is every person that I did speak to, everything was positive. Um, which made the decision even easier than it already was. Do you have the Euros in mind? I've always, yeah, I've always got the Euros in mind. I've always got England in mind. So, yeah, yeah, Don't a, mean the coins. The, the, the <laughs> it's a big, it's a big, um, it's a big thing playing for my country, as everybody knows, you know. Um, and I always, that's always been the case wherever I've played. And um, but ultimately, you know, I've got to be doing my job on the pitch for Ajax and doing well for Ajax. That's my main priority. And if I'm doing that, then, then hopefully I'll be called up to the England squad. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Jordan, welcome in Amsterdam. Thank you. Um, when do you think you can make your debut? <laughs> I hope as soon as possible, but it's not really in, in my hands. I've just got to wait and see when the, um, when the visas or the work permits get done. I'm not sure how long that takes, but hopefully yeah, as soon as that's done, I can get training, I can, I can get playing. Um, so yeah, I'm not. I'm not quite sure how long that's going to take. And I was wondering, um, at Liverpool, you had some great years on the Jurgen Klopp, playing uh, gegenpressing pressing football and also creating uh, a bit of chaos on the pitch, right? Um, and here at Ajax, they were asking you to do uh, something completely different to create control uh, on the pitch. Uh, that's different mindset. Do you think you can adapt to that easily? Yeah, I think. I think so. I think you know. 
I'm pretty experienced, I would say, um, but I still feel at a, a good enough age, young enough age, t physically I feel really in good shape um, and I understand football um, and the different ways of playing, but that's, yeah, I can speak to the coach, I can pe speak to the staff and get training with the players, get used to that, but I have every confidence that I can come in and make a, a good difference or a big difference in a, in a good way. Um, and I just want to show people and, and, like I said, repay the faith that they've showed in me by bringing us to this amazing football club. Jordan, hi. Hi. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, you were obviously a, a high-profile marquee signing in Saudi Arabia. How do you feel you coming back after six months will, will affect other players who might be tempted, other managers as well, who might be tempted to go there? And would you advise them, Mo Salah, for example, against going to Saudi Arabia? No, def definitely not. You know, listen, people, pe everyone's different. You know, you've got, you look at people who are there, big players who are there now, who are loving every second of it, staying there for a long period of time and love it. You might get others that don't settle or, f or something happens in the, in the private life, whatever it may be, um, and things change quickly. So, yeah, everybody's different, but I would definitely not sit here and speak badly of the league or the clubs or anything like that. That's, that, that's just not the case. Um, and I've got full respect for the opportunity that I was given to go there. Um, and unfortunately, it uh, didn't work out. It was, it was a short p space of time. But again, that can happen in life. That can happen in football, you know, and that's the way it is. You just got to move on and we we'll both, sh both shake hands and, and move on and, and nothing, nothing changes. Just been announced that Steve Gerrard's staying. How did you break the news to him and how did he take it? Well, as you may know, I have a, a really good relationship with Stevie um, and he was brilliant over the six months I was there. Um, so I'm, I'm delighted for him that he's got the contract extension. Um, he's been brilliant since he's been there. It's been a bit of a tough time over the past month or so up to the, towards the back end of the break. But he, he's been brilliant with me, brilliant for the, for the club. Um, and I'm sure he'll continue to do that for a long, a long period of time. But our relationship was always strong and always will be strong. You've spoken about how excited you are to come here and, and of course you've looked around the museum, a brilliant club, prestigious club, big history. But lots of people know you're still playing for England, you could still do a job in the Premier League. Did you have offers from the Premier League at all or, or, or even from England anyway? Uh, I don't think it's right for me to sit here and talk about who was, in, who was there in terms of wanted to bring us, whether it's Premier League, whether it's any other club really. Um, I think you know today is all about Ajax. And, um, and then giving me the opportunity to, to come here. And um, yeah, I'm very flattered and overwhelmed that that was the case. But also I'm very overwhelmed with the, with the welcome and the reception that I've got over the past day or so. Um, it's been unbelievable and I can't, can't thank the club, uh, the staff, the players, but also the fans enough for how that makes me feel. Um, and I just like, I, I want to just repair the faith as soon as possible and get on the pitch and try to do my job. Thank you very much. Hello. Congratulations. Thank um, you. You've, you've talked about learnings from your Saudi experience. I was just wondering, there was obviously a lot of hurt amongst the LGBTQ plus community over your move. I was wondering if you had plans now to reach out to any representatives of the LGBT plus community, have conversations, start mending those bridges. I think, you know, all I want to do here is concentrate on my football like I've always done. You know, all I've ever done in the past is try to help people that have asked for me help, ultimately. Um, and that's all I've ever done um, and like I said if, if any of that any people from that community feel let down or hurt I'll, I apologise um, I did that six months ago I'll do it again that was never my intention I had to make a decision based on what I thought was best for me and my family um, but, but I understood it at the same time you know but um, I haven't changed as a person as I just alluded to before I have the same beliefs um, and yeah, that, that, that's it really. I just want to come and, and concentrate on playing football for Ajax and doing the best I can. Okay. Welcome to Amsterdam. My name is Robert Misset. Hi, uh, thank you. We also know you as a person who was uh, socially committed. Um, did you understand you know, the criticism also in England about going to Saudi Arabia and maybe helping them do kind of sports washing because we all know about human rights in Saudi Arabia. Did it change your mind when you went there? Did you see other things or did you not let's say, re you know, regret this decision? No, that wasn't that was not the case at all. You know, I, st I went there with full commitment of trying to help the league, trying to help the club I was at, trying to help Stevie and the players when I was there. And that's what I'd done for six months. I committed. Um, 
and give everything. But like I said, things can change in football. Things can happen both on and off the pitch. And you have to make a decision based on what you think is best for you and your family. And an opportunity like, that, like this doesn't come around very often. Um, and I wanted to do it. I was desperate to come. And um, thankfully, I was able to do that. Hello, Jordan. Hi. Uh, they say um, uh, wine improves with age. Does that also <laughs> apply to you? <laughs> I, hope, I hope so. That would be nice, yeah. <laughs> You're like a good English wine? I hope so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, how does it work? But you're a little bit older, not too old, but yeah. a little bit older. Can you tell us something about how that works? Can you be at the level when yeah. you was at Liverpool? Or yeah. <laughs> Listen, I, I still physically feel very, very good. Um, I train very hard. I look after myself. I dedicate my life to football. I have done since I was a kid, and I hope to play for many, many years to come. Um, obviously, with age becomes more experience. You learn a lot. You, yeah. you go through different experiences, both in football and in life. Um, and I feel as though I'm a wiser person now at, at my age. And hopefully, I can take that onto the pitch, take that into the team, and help a lot of the younger players. Um, make the next step in the, in the career, but at the same time be at the level where I need to perform at the highest level every single game. Um, and hopefully you'll see that I can be able to do that over the next coming months. Good. You always played with number 14. <laughs> That's not allowed here. No. <laughs> Did you know it already before you went to Amsterdam? So, I was look when I knew it could be happening, I was obviously looking at the the squad numbers and stuff and see what's available and I seen that 14 wasn't available so initially I thought oh it's free you know <laughs> so then I was I was speaking to to my friend um and and then like as as I was speaking I was like I'm sure that was that's Christ number like and then he's and then he's gone well is it not retired and I've gone I think it might be so then we googled it retired and it made sense so I, I was getting excited for a little bit I thought it was meant to be but then it quickly uh, it quickly changed but obviously for um, yeah that makes total sense um, and to be honest you know I'm not bothered about numbers 14 was a big number for me while I was at Liverpool um, but I've been different numbers throughout my career when I was at Sutherland and obviously Coventry as well so it wasn't a, it wasn't a big thing for me and I think the club wanted 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 us to have number six and that that, that fit perfectly for me um my son's uh, birthday is on the sixth um which is nice and also my father when he played when he was younger said he was number six so that's nice as well <laughs> hi John hi. um obviously you received a lot of criticism when you decided to join our fact and then you were booed when you played for England how hurt have you been by all that um <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and, and say I haven't been hurt, but at the same time, you know, I understand it, you know, but I do care uh, if people might think I don't, but I actually do care, you know, about other people. And I do think a lot about, yeah, football and, 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 and how, I, how I treat other people and have respect for other people. Um, so it does hurt, of course, but at the same time, I totally respect their opinions and, dis and and how they view me as a as a person, and um, I just had to obviously take it on the chin, and that's all I've continued to do. I've never tried to hurt anybody. I never that was never my intention ever. Um, and if people feel a type of way towards me, then um, yeah, all I can do is apologise for that. But I've never done anything to to hurt anybody. Um, and of course, I'm hurt. But you know, it's part and parcel of of life and football. You know, it makes you stronger and. Um, I just want to con concentrate on getting back to, to playing football with Ajax and doing my best for this football club. Uh, Jordan, you mentioned you learnt a lot in Saudi. Can you tell us a couple of things you learnt while you were in Saudi about yourself and about football? Um, I think just the whole experience. I learnt a lot in different ways, you know, moving abroad, quite a different culture, um, different league. Um, living in a different country with with my family, um, yeah, just as you can imagine, you know, totally different experience, which um, was something that we thought about when we went there as well. And like, it was a it was a totally different experience than I've ever experienced before in the last six months. Um, obviously, some some great things along them six months, some not so great things. But again, that's life. Um, you, you 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 go through them, you you learn from your experiences, and and you move forward. 
Uh, before we end this uh, English version of the this English part, is there anyone from abroad who wants to ask a question to our coach? Yeah? And then we... Wil je ook nog? Ja, yeah, nou, dat begint. No worries, guys. I'll just clarify quickly. I think Jordan pointed it out, but I can't train with the group until the work permit and everything comes through and how much how much work are you doing to try and get that through as quick as possible? Who's that? Is that from... Coach. Who will know? Uh, I know we don't know. You, they went this morning to arrange some paperwork and we have to wait for the working permit. And then the process continues. Can't train at the moment with the group. No, no, not allowed to. No, not allowed okay. to. No, no, no. Yeah, I just wanted to double check. Thank yeah? you. Okay. Go on. Hey, Jordan. Um, you said a couple of times uh, I'm dedicating my life to this club. What does that look like? <sighs> uh, that looks like eat, breathe and sleep, Ajax and dedicating my life to, to try every single day, every single session, um, to try to be better, to try to help this team and this club be better. Um, and that's, like I said, that's what I've done my whole career, wherever I've been at, you know, I did that Liverpool for, for 12 years. Um, so, yeah, I suppose it's pretty normal for me. Um, and I just want to come here and do the same again. Uh, last question. I wondered if you knew any players before you signed here. Any Ajax players? Personally? Play yeah, you played. I don't yeah, personally not, but you played against a couple, I guess. Yeah, I played against a few. You know, I, play I played Ajax a few times here. I played, um, I'm sure I, I, pl <laughs> I played for Sunderland here as well in like a mini tournament pre-season. Tournament, yeah. yeah, I played for England against Holland here, I'm pretty sure. You won, them so all. you won them all. I won them all, so hopefully that's a good a good omen, yes. Um, but of course I know, yeah, some players, you know, Bergwijn played Premier League, Berghaus I've played, Robbie up front I've played against. So I've played against a lot of them, you know, Taylor as well in midfield. Played against a lot of them over the last the, the few years. So yeah, I know them, I don't know them personally, um, but hopefully over the next few weeks, I'll, I'll get to know him very well, and um, and I'm just happy and glad to be part of the team. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, welcome. Um, do you see yourself as a, a leader for building the new Ajax, like Dusan Tadic and uh, Daily Blind were in recent years? <sighs> yeah, I, I mean they've done incredible jobs, Tadic and, and Blind. I've heard when they came here, you could see yeah the fantastic players, fantastic people as well. I've, I've heard behind the scenes, so you know. For me, I don't want to, to compare to anybody else. I just want to come here and, and try and be myself, um, try and do um, what, what I've been brought here to do, and that's dedicate everything, like I've said, every single day to try to help this team, this club, uh, move in the right direction. Um, and hopefully I can do that and show people that over the next few months. Joey. Hi, Jordan. Over here. Where are we going? Back. Back. Yeah, got yeah. Hi. Um, are you the new captain already? No. <laughs> no. Do you expect you're going to be the new captain? No, I don't think so. No. What's wrong with the captain that's there now? You don't like? Well, yes, I do like, but maybe you're the next captain. No, 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 no. Listen, the captain of the club is is Stephen. Yeah. So yeah, no, nothing around that. You know, um, for me, it's just coming here, and um, I don't need to be to be captain or anything like that, to do what what I've done my me, me whole career really, and that's try and lead by example, um, both on and off the pitch. Um, yeah, and I'll, that, I'll just continue to, to do that. Thanks. Any English questions for our coach? Yeah? And then we'll continue in Dutch afterwards. Yes. Hello, coach. Hi. Thank you for sitting there patiently. <laughs> When you heard that there was a possibility of, of getting Jordan, what did you think? How excited were you, and, uh, and why do you want him here? Well, we had, of course, um, a profile that we we wanted to get in. Um, looking at our team, looking at the games we've been playing, and and a lot of uh, difficulties that we had uh, from the start of the season. And our priority was really getting an experienced uh, midfielder, defensive midfielder or 6'8". And um, also looking at some players that we already have in our squad that are injured. So we were very 
you know, let's say, uh, limited on that position. And of course, when uh, when we got the opportunity to uh, to get in touch with uh, with Jordan and and to finally get him in, uh, yeah, I think that's it's really great for for the group, for for the club, and of course, as, as Jordan says, we, we just have to let him do his thing, and uh, and we will we will help him with with everything that we can that he can uh, get as soon as possible. Um, hopefully, he gets the working permit quick and he can start training with the team and, and play. Yes? And uh, we? Yeah? Have you another last one? That's the final question for Jordan, then. You remember the guy from, from the, the Guardian? The Dutch Guardian. <laughs> yeah. you, play, you played as a six and as an eight yeah. in Liverpool. But what yeah. is your favourite position? Uh, I, to be honest, I don't mind. I don't mind. I do whatever's um, being asked. I've, I've played both positions a lot. I would say, you know, both Liverpool, England. I played. I played six and eight. Um, so I've sort of switched between the two over the most of my career. Well, yeah, over the last definitely five years of my career, I would say I've switched between the two um, quite often. Um, so I would say I'm experienced in both positions and whatever the team needs um, in certain games. Um, and whatever the coach decides, then yeah, I'll just try and do my best in, in whatever position that is.